thanks for everybody coming out here this morning. Uh, this is really cool. So, um, yeah. So this is it. Uh, welcome to our presentation, Cream Cyber Rules Everything Around Me, because I feel like it does with me here lately. I don't know about you, John. But... I definitely feel like it does with me as well, and probably all of us. Yeah. Um, and please feel free if anybody is a Wu Tang fan, or if you're not a Wu Tang fan, hold up your W's during the talk, because has Wu Tang is for everyone. So that's right, <clears throat> especially the children, so. especially the kids, the children, the kids, everything. So. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, Jeff, you, I know you kind of already gave your spill. So yeah. uh, Jeff, you have the you have the the clicker, right? So you're gonna be yep. kind of flipping pages here. Yeah, let me just figure that out here with the arrows. <laughs> Jeez, we there we go. The technology. Um, so with that being said, um, again, and thanks everyone for your your patience. Sorry if it seemed kind of wobbly here. I'm having to do this from a, a laptop in a Marriott. Um, so for the talk today, right, everything is going to be Wu-Tang related. However, the talk, this talk is to basically give you insight on how you can take things from your military past to your current life and actually use those and, and, and find ways to turn uh, your, your history into inflection points where you can actually rise above yourself and your peers and also help out yourself and your peers. So, um, and if anyone is not familiar with Wu-Tang, a lot of their stuff comes from their stories of growing up in the slums of New York City and actually coming together, creating a brotherhood and being better than each other and challenging each other to make what became the Wu-Tang Clan, which is, you know, they're, Jeff, they've been around for, what, 30 years? And they're still yeah, they one dropped of the 36 chambers in 93, so. Yeah, so almost 30 years, and they're still one of the top, uh, most well-known um rap groups hip-hop groups right and they're we sell out shows you know and it's because they stuck to a plan and they banded together right they dropped their egos they took the um what they learned from growing up in the ghetto of staten island and learned how to use all of that energy and make turn it into a positive outcome right and now now they they have become the wu-tang clan right so the music's timeless. that's kind of the that, that's kind of the the agenda and the mantra uh, for this entire talk, right? So hopefully after this, my, my hope is that you come out of this uh, understanding a lot more about how you can turn what you know and have it help yourself. But also I hope that you go and you go on Spotify, Apple Music or whatever, and you go blast 36 Chambers for the rest of the day. <laughs> and also uh, later this evening, check out Bang American Saga, as Kevin you know pointed out. Uh, season two just finished up. It's great. And you learn more about their history and their story. So. Yeah, it's 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 a really cool theatrical way of how they paint, how they became a group, and it's pretty spot on. Yeah. Um, so, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, kind of like run through what we're going to be talking about today. So, we're going to go through the introductions, right? So, you're obviously going to hear me blab about myself, and I'm blabbing right now. Then Jeff is going to take the mic here for a little bit, and then he's going to run you through the plan. And then, honestly, he and I talked about a way of how we would we wanted to do this, and because he and I have such diverse different backgrounds, we are actually going to kind of like freestyle it, right, and between each other. And, you know, I'm big on collaboration. So if you want to join, you know, mine and Jeff's talk and like add to the chat, or if you even want to come hot mic it for a second, I'm all about it. I'm sure mm -hmm. Jeff is all about it, right? Like we're here to share experiences and, and just, you know, this this hour is for us, right? So the the whole slide deck that you see here, or I'm sorry, all the bullet points are going to be things that we're going to talk about of how you can take what you know and and use it to better yourself and and a lot of it coming from your military background uh jeff i don't know if you have anything you want to add no we're just, no that was pretty good and we're just going cool. to do it with style though so yeah all right so next throw the mic around I'm, I'm all about it so let's go ahead and uh spit fire and go to the next one Peace. all right so Look at me. I mean, that's not me, but that's kind of me, right? <laughs> so, uh, so uh, you know, this is a the the very obvious like, who am I? The origin story, kind of, right? And I'm not going to spit about it too much because I know um, we're you know already running ten minutes into the presentation. But who am I? My name is John Helmus, or a lot of times in the uh, community you might hear me go as Moose or Moosey. Um, I'm an offensive security guy, pen tester, been doing this stuff for about five years. Before that, I was information security, IT, and then before that, I was an engineer. 
Um, I'm also an author. I've written, I've authored my own book, AWS Penetration Testing, that came out uh, this past December. So it's almost about to hear it's hit its one year mark. Um, and then me, uh, Dr. Gerald Osier, Jack Scott, who's actually in the crowd there. So go say hi to her. And Kim Nguyen wrote a book called The Cyber Master Plan or The Cybersecurity Master Plan. And it's a book that if you are looking to get into the field, it's definitely something that I would say that you need to go buy. I'll let Jax kind of like talk about it if she wants, if you have questions, because I know she's in the chat. So Jax, you kind of just got reeled in. Um, I'm also a professor, so I teach at a lot of different universities. Um, I'm big on academia and giving back. Um, and there's a lot of folks that go to universities to, you know, learn. Um, so I like to take my technical expertise as a pen tester and illustrate that in cybersecurity programs. Um, also got the OSCP, the Offensive Security Certified Professional, um, which is the big quarter gras, hoorah certification of the offensive security realm. Uh, I'm a Wu-Tang representer, right? I would think I've been listening to, I remember listening to Wu-Tang in 95 when I was six years old. So I'm showing my age definitely now. Uh, Papa Moose, so I have, I'm the father of two little ones, uh, a four-year-old and a six-year-old, actually about to be seven tomorrow. So happy birthday to her. Um, yeah. I'm a farmer. <laughs> I raise alpacas uh, and, and rescue them in my, on my farm up in uh, just north of Seattle. And then uh, I'm also a Navy vet. Uh, so I served from uh, 2010 to 2014. Uh, I did anything from special warfare to special ops to special boat operations and uh, didn't do anything IT related. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass it off to Jeff. All right. Thanks, man. That was a good intro. Thank Let's you. See what I got. Oh, and the next, the, I'm su surprisingly, if you look at that, this was taken about a month ago. I'm still wearing the same getup. I don't have my Frenchie with me, but I'm wearing the same getup. <laughs> I like my colors. What's up, guys? So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Jeff Tomkowitz. Uh, let's see. I start. Let's see. Yeah, I work threat and vulnerability management, uh, or yeah, engineer here within the healthcare system. Uh, I'm an educator. I get involved with my local communities, whether it be ISSA locally here or local high school with Cyber Patriot. Uh, if you guys haven't heard of it, really cool program. Uh, Air Force uh, Association runs it and it teaches all these kids in high school, uh, everything like within cybersecurity. These kids get like really impressive. Uh, yeah, they build a lot of impressive skills. So uh, it's pretty amazing watching them. Uh, additionally, I'm a dad, all right, human, and I got a dog, just got a dog here back in May. So she's adjusting here well, a little pit bull, Gracie. So. And then I got uh, two kids here, uh, myself as well. No birthdays anytime soon, though, for them. Actually, yeah, in a couple of months, so close enough. But, uh, also, I'm a husband. Been married for a while here, coming up on 12 years here uh, tomorrow, actually. Jeez, time flies. But uh, like John, you know, I'm a farmer, too. Uh, I don't have alpacas, but, you know, I have uh, actually, uh, was it? I wouldn't say ride them, but wrangled them. Is that a good word, John. Wrangle, yeah, wrangle's a term, I guess. Yeah. Right. Wrangle. Lassoing okay. them. But uh, I also like to, you know, do farming, raise chickens, all that good stuff, gardens. Uh, I am a Wu Tang representer, proudly say it. Uh, yeah, thirty six chambers got me in a lot of trouble as a kid. Uh, I had a little recorded copy on a tape deck that got found, and yeah, uh, I was in yeah big big trouble, but totally worth it. Uh, yeah, just retired from the Air Force here back in June. Uh, did some years there. Uh, no, I did not fly planes. Uh, a lot of people like to ask me that. Uh, no, I was military police. So my first uh, 10 years worked uh, canine, uh, the dogs and everything, all that good stuff. Then uh, just the usual cop stuff, uh, security manager, all that good stuff. <laughs> and retired as a ops superintendent. And yeah, so that's me in a nutshell. So next slide, John. Yeah. Let's yeah. Let's this. go for it. All right. So the plan. All right. Everything here, what we're going to talk about today. All right. It could be thought as of a roadmap. It's like up to you, though, however, to make yourself accountable. All right. Yourself. Okay. Because I don't know how many people we know. Right. I'm sure we can name off a bunch of them. We come across every day. You know, that, that just simply just don't do this hold themselves accountable. And, and the second piece there, humility, you know, being humble. All right. But uh, if you can do this, like, you know, you hold yourself accountable and be humble. Uh, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to have like great success. Okay. But most important. Okay. When doing all this, you gotta think first, all right? You must think first before you move. All right. 
you guys listen to Wu-Tang, you know where that's from. We're seeing the film Wu-Tang and Shaolin. You, you know what I'm talking about. So, but get this, okay? When you are successful, own it, okay? That's the time when you don't have to be so humble. I mean, a little bit, you know, but own it, okay? It's your success. I know a lot of us in the military tend to, you know, not be braggarts, okay? We're just kind of drilled in our heads, okay? No, for once, like, celebrate it, okay? Like, enjoy it. You earned it, okay? This takes a lot of hard work, you know, getting out of the military, finding a job, and then battling the other things, you know, that are going on in your life. Because as we're going to get into it here, you're going to see, like, we go through a lot. Cool? John, what do you got for me? Uh, yeah, I think the big thing, man, is uh, instill humility in yourself. Because if you can't be humble with yourself, you're going to give yourself um, a facade of results and a, and a facade of expectations. Um, and what I mean by that is if you don't, it's like thinking about it, like if you if you look at your bank account and you're like, oh, I got $3,000 in my bank account. And my, my rent's, you know, due at, at this certain date, whatever. I'll just spend this kind of money. It's fine. And then you go and spend something that's two thousand dollars you're like well i got three thousand dollars in the bank whatever you're creating a facade that you have a certain amount of something or that you're doing something and then you're actually doing something that's actually going to hinder yourself so and while that's a simple analogy you can spread that analogy to anything is make sure that you're true to yourself and that you're true to your processes that you create for yourself because otherwise none of the shit we're talking about today and part of my french none of it's gonna work it's not gonna work and that's the big key takeaway from anything we're going to talk about today. And, you know, we know it from being in, in the military, right? Piss poor planning leads to piss poor performance, right? So if you don't plan correctly and you don't lay true to your plan, you're going to have a bad outcome. So make sure that you, you know, just like uh, Kendrick said, be humble. Another hip hop song. Yeah. <laughs> Next slide. Yeah. Yep. Right. Tiger right. style. I'll let you take it, Mister. That's actually fun fact. the The graphic in the back is just like. No, it's my back. Yeah. Oh, it's his back. Whatever. It's his yeah. backside. Back of his yeah. leg. Back. Okay. But it's actually yeah, it's his. It's a tattoo. Of <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to take it, go ahead. All right. So Tiger style. Okay. This is brute force. Okay. Some slang right there. Okay. You're gonna notice we're gonna use a lot of slang today. Like Wu Tang. All right. <laughs> Tang is the slang. All right. So brute forcing, all right? Anything is possible, all right? So you're gonna find in life, you know, or as you go through this process, you're gonna have hopes, dreams, aspirations, and good goals, you know? Good, you know, you should have those things. And like we said before, hold true to it, you know? Be humble, but hold true to it. And as you're doing this, you're gonna run across some folks that are gonna be naysayers. They're gonna say otherwise. I have happened to me. Uh, when I was trying to get my first gig and everything, and I'm studying hard, doing what I got to do. And still, regardless, you're going to have people like, yeah, good luck with that, whatever, you know, whether it be in the military or on the outside, you know, when you're applying for jobs or whatever it is, they're out there, the naysayers. Don't let them get to you. Don't, okay? There's going to be wins and losses. No doubt about that. I had many as I was trying to get my first gun. John will tell you. I, like I, I was beyond frustrated. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah. And I, whether it be the gatekeeping, whatever it is, but you just got to keep pushing. Like, to, yeah, to, it's gonna to harp get on that point too, Jeff. To harp on that point, folks, just know too. He's talking about there's wins and losses. Know that a body can't stay warm and stay alive without a heartbeat. Your career is the same way. It's got to have some ups and it's got to have some downs, right? The stock market doesn't make money. It be, by just going up, it has to go down so that pe more people buy into it, right? So if if you're only going up, then you're not you're not going to have longevity, and if you're only going down, you're not going to be able to make it. So it has to have a heartbeat, yep. right? So remember that, right? Losses aren't losses technically. Think of them more as learning experience, or has a has you know a a, a time to gain some knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Sorry, um, I didn't mean to cut you. Oh, no, that was good. Uh, so, okay, tenacity, okay? This is, like, very, very important. Um, I've noticed, too, yeah, like, you, you just got to have that tenacity. You got to, like, again, like I was saying before, like, push yourself. But, again, you got to have that style to it, like a tiger, man. Like, just pounce on it. Be all over it. Uh, and you're going to see, too, like, 
once you get over into the civilian world too as well they're going to be your counterparts that like don't get it either but i feel there's a lot of us like this in the military that that do have it so use it don't be afraid uh like to use that tenacity that you use throughout your whole career towards this excuse me that's my dog gracie excuse me she was chewing on something there um so where were we oh yeah so then finally you know it's about hacking the process and executing okay so for those of us that are in offensive security, okay, we know, okay, you know, we start off with our recon, right? Then we enumerate what we find, okay? Then we use that, okay? And once we get an initial foothold, like we priv-esk, okay? We get we escalator privileges. And then finally, did I get that backwards, John? Geez, oh. I recon, did. enumeration, priv and yeah. exploit? Uh, yeah. A little bit, but that's okay. A Excuse a little me. bit sometimes you have to well, I, I recognized it i recognized it yeah it's okay it's okay <laughs> because it, it, it falls in line with your pro you know your process and yeah. you're going through your 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 steps and your strategies and your methods right mm -hmm. enumerating finding out more about what you need to do privesque think about that as like leveling up right uh, and exploiting is getting there right or exploiting could be you could even think about it and maybe we you know apologies for the typos but you know, whatever. It's cool. We're freestyling here. Getting there, exploitation, that could think of that has the sense of taking the action, making the step forward, picking your foot up and trying it out. Right. And then we're getting that job, you know, <laughs> yeah, getting that job. Privest, think about that as like leveling up. Right. Yeah. How do you get there? Right. How do you get to that point? Who do you need to use around you? What do you need? What? Do, how does your mindset need to shift? How do you need to gain wisdom and knowledge and mature maturity as an individual and as a professional to get to that point? I think that's a good way to put it. You're muted, bud. Yeah, I was trying to click on it, and then this little tab came up and <laughs> blocked me. It's all all right, good, thanks, John. Appreciate it. All right. So next, all right, the game of chess. It's like a sword fight. All right. So like I said previously, and uh, one of the the plan slide there. All right, we got to think first before we move. And what I'm talking about here is our short short term and long term goals. Many of us being in the military, we're pretty familiar with this, right? Uh, if we've supervised or, or heck, if someone supervised us, okay, they've asked us this time and time again. So when doing this too, I want I want to know, think of first and second order effects if you can too while planning this out because, or and, and then additionally have a plan A, B, C. It wouldn't hurt a plan D as well, okay? Back to the PPP, you know? We don't want that, all right? So we want the, what's a better, like, well, good planning, I guess, <laughs> in this yeah. case. Long term, a lot of times, too, too long-term moves are made by 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 uh, accumulation of smart, or I'm not sorry, not smart, short and small goals, right? That's how big companies make success. They don't, they don't, you just don't go out and you don't create the Google search engine today. No, you do small steps to, to get there. Right. And you you want if you want to create something, it's not built in a day. Right. It's the cliche of Rome. It wasn't built in a day. Uh, you have to take those small moves and track your progress on those moves. So we'll get into that more. You hit a good point there with the, the small or a little step to change there. We'll get into that more uh, next. Yeah. Develop a career strategy. You got to have a plan. Uh, and I feel like this is beaten in the head a lot but i just see it time and time again people getting out like when i was going through taps and folks just sitting in there had no clue what they wanted to do next and i felt like myself and one other we actually had legit plans uh on getting out and you could see like the scared looks in people's faces so get a career you know strategy going get a plan going something please you know i plead to you please you know do something in school, like, that's great, you know, have other options too, as well, because that was me scared. Look, thanks, Kevin. You can also yeah, concurrently do there. all of those things. You can, you can find ways to hack, to stack what you're doing mm -hmm. and not get burnt out. Also know that, and that's, that pulls a lot from your tenacity from being in the military is understanding you work. We've all worked, had to work and excel under stress. So you can actually do that um, and find ways that of how you can use that as an inflection point to push yourself further, right? Saying like, you know, if you're you're studying for, if you want a certification and you're going to school, I, I tell this to my students all the time, cool, like if this, if this 
uh, class that you're is you're in for the fall or the spring or the winter or whatever, whatever it is, if it has if it aligns with a certification by like sixty percent, guess what? That certification probably only needs you to pass with an, a seventy to eighty percent. So therefore, you only have to put in a little bit of extra effort, but you can stack those two things together, right? That's something that it's very very common to do, um, or even too when you're in the field, right? And you wanna if you wanna level up. You got to learn to stack some of your tasks and uh, and use your methods to be able to do that. So, let you take Also, uh, something that helps too is finding a mentor, uh, like big time. Uh, and, you, and you don't just have to have one. I, you know, you can have many too. I have many. You know, and I can think of them as a team. And I'm very thankful for them all. You know, John's included in that. Did you know that? What? That you were in my team. No, we just fam. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you're on my team, fam. So yeah, we fam. So <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. So find a mentor. It helps like big time. And again, you can have many. Uh, I I find this like greatly helps. How about you, John? Yeah. Yeah. No. You just no. gunsling, or you do it on your own. Yeah. Wait. What? <laughs> yeah, to both. Okay. Where do you find a mentor? Ron asks. Uh, you can. A lot. That's a good question. A lot of times you need yep. to read. A lot of times you can go on LinkedIn or on Twitter and just reach out. You'll usually cra- grab, grab a couple bites and you don't need to get, you know, you don't need to go. You don't go fishing to grab all the fish in the lake, right? You go to grab one or two and, 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 and reel it in and, and go home with your payload. It's the same thing, right? Like you can go on LinkedIn and on Twitter and you might be out there for a little bit trying to find someone. But if you do, and if you find that one person, that person's going to help you at that moment in time. And it doesn't mean that you need to have that person in your life for forever, right? We, it's just like friendships and just people that come into your personal life. Some, you know, you might rotate people out of your personal life and that's okay, but those people have an impact on your life at that certain point in time and you do as well, right? So if you find a mentor, that's only going to help. It's they're only, you know, helping you through your career for a couple months and then you find another one. That's okay. You're leveling up. It's the natural transgression or, or transitioning of finding mentors right you find different ones all the time and that's and that's okay it's nothing personal right it's it's you about becoming better that's beautiful <laughs> thank you all right uh so oh, deaf groups to tell me fine yeah that's a good resource there too kevin the deaf con groups there and then to the biggest thing too that uh, don't be afraid to reach out and ask and that's how i found many of my mentors and stuff i just went out there and just, Hey, you know, just don't be afraid. A lot of them, you know, or I haven't ran into one that's been negative towards me, you know, in response. So just don't be afraid, go ahead on LinkedIn, send a message, you know, and yeah, it's worked. You'll be surprised. So, uh, what type of work? Okay. We got to figure out too, you know, as you're making this transition, you know, what type of work do you enjoy? Okay. Uh, or do you want to be red team? Do you want to be blue team? Uh, and I made a joke. Do you want to be a lawnmower repair man? <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't know. I mean, there's so many jobs within cyber, you know, it's pretty tough to figure out right away. And so, you know, some methods I, I, I just kind of learned, you know, just when I was making my transition, um, you know, some certification did help like security plus where you learn, you know, the general broad sense of, you know, cybersecurity, uh, which I think is great. And then, just talking with folks and all and trying out things like capture the flag events or like the sites you can do at home like hack the box try hack me which has everything you know to include blue team as well and i just decided hey red team's for me so you know i went that route and i employ you guys to do the same as well they just have fun with it go out there just figure out if you don't like it hey whatever you know it's not like you have to visit it again but just explore try it out you know uh if i can add to that too man the thing about the lawnmower repair person is it's a that's a key point to mention is that don't tie your ego to something right if you want to be a lawnmower person who cares if that's what's yep. going to make you happy and bring yep. fruit bring your life to fruition cool go do it don't tie your ego to something because you think it sounds cool or it looks cool because you're going to hate yourself for it right a lot of people want to leap onto the red team side because they think it sounds cool because you get to hack stuff you get to do things like that all the time you might not like it Right. Yeah. And then I'm not going to say I'm not going to talk about all the reasons of why you might not like it, because that only, you know, that 
but don't tie your ego to it and say, well, I want to be a hacker just because you think it sounds cool, right? Because as someone who does it for a living, there are plenty of days where I'm like, this is not cool. <laughs> a lot of oh, politics, especially. a lot of politics, a lot of meetings, a lot of, a lot of rising grind all day to where at the end of the day, you're just beat and you kind of, there are things that you sometimes miss out on. Right. So like, like that's from my own mishaps, right? Like I still love what I do, but you know, I've also uh, gone through other things in my life where I actually used to want to do uh, software development. I wanted to be a developer and then I realized I didn't want to stare at code all day. Um, but I originally tied to that and I really had, I, for a while I had my ego tied to that and I had to let that go. And it's been a lot better since then. So um, I just wanted to point that out, Jeff, is that, you know, the lawnmower thing, while it's, you know, silly, it, it proves a point of saying, if you want to go do that, go do it. Who cares? Right. Exactly. Don't do something just because you think it's, you know, as Ron is saying, hacking is sexy. I don't know, man. It's it, it's it's a different field. So, you know, yeah. do what makes you happy. Right. Yeah. Do what makes you happy. And what gives you purpose? You know, that, that's the biggest key. You know, what makes you feel that you have purpose? So it, it could be that, you know, like working on parts all day and like figuring out like some people like that, you know, and that's cool. So. Um, so, yeah, the next we also got to think, OK, how far out okay, with our planning and all right, one year, three years, five years. OK, like John mentioned earlier in the beginning, you know, Riza, he had a plan for the clan for, you know, five years. OK, to reach success and all them to have their own solo albums, this, that, the other. And it worked, you know, it really did in the end, within five years, uh, it did. And luckily for them, it went beyond that. But uh, so, yeah, again, like five years. That, and if you guys haven't seen it, uh, Black Hills InfoSec, they have a good uh, podcast or video cast on a five year plan. And they like really get into it, uh, just what you should be doing within five years if you want to get into InfoSec or cybersecurity. And I highly recommend it. And I'll try and get a link here throughout the talk uh, on it. They have two versions of it. That's right, Paul, they do. You're right. And yeah, amazing workshops as well, Kevin. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate it. So yeah, check that link out. Uh, and then finally, you know, I want to, you know, just say uh, on this slide, uh, talk to those working in your dream job, you know, the, where you want to be. Surround yourself with those people that where you want to be, okay? Don't be afraid to, to ask, okay? Be fierce about it. Like, you have to be. You have to go in there, guns blazing, swords swinging sometimes. Like, it, it shows them that, okay, you know, that you're dedicated, you, like, you want this. You, It's meaningful to you. So, John, you got anything on that? Okay, cool. Now let's keep going, bro. We still got a, quite a few slides, and we're... Yeah, I know. All right. next step okay so all right continued on here okay so you got to set yourself up for success all right this is your career remember that this is your career your life okay so it's not mine it's not john's it's not rebecca down in accounting okay this is your life your career okay you got to set yourself up you got to think about yourself at the end of the day okay and what's good for you John, I've been beating it. Piss poor planning. Okay, leaders. Okay, which leads to piss poor performance. Okay, I like that. Use that. We've never seen that team. in the military ever. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so take time beforehand. Okay. Especially when it comes to certifications. If you know, hey, I got to get that Sec Plus or that Network Plus, whatever it is, like, plan it out ahead of time. It's better to have it before you're transitioning and doing all that while you're doing your transitioning. I've seen it countless times. Like so many people like doing that as they're like, oh, how much time you got left? Oh, I'm gonna like terminal leave right now. I got a month, you know, and I gotta get these three certs. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, that's just a lot of pressure you don't need, you know? And uh, you're, you're essentially too like just cram and just dump all the information afterwards, you know? So, that, and that's not good. Uh, Oh yes, now back to small changes versus big changes, all right? Big changes, this is my two cents on it all. Big changes. We go in and all in and yeah, we try to change the world here, okay? And it's often not, we don't see it through or we don't complete it, all right? This leaves people feeling frustrated. Uh, often 
it's hard then to get back in there and to make those changes again. Like you just abandoned it all together. I've just seen that time and time again. Now the small changes, they gotta be very small and gradual, almost as if something's not taking place. Uh, and then from there is, you know, you keep doing it. Okay, it's gonna build up, it's gonna add, okay? And it's like working out, okay? It's painful at first, you know, but you only gotta do a little bit, okay? A lot of people, you see them January 1st at the gym. Da, 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 da. And then what is it? February 20th? <laughs> it's oh, back to the same old, same old, where you, you don't need to do that, you know? You could just say, hey, I'm gonna start walking, you know, every day, you know? And then from there, maybe a month or two later, all right, let's start doing a little jogging, you know, build it up. So small, gradual little changes, okay, that are like works the best. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And then we got some comments here. I think, too, while you're in the comments is uh, with the big changes, small changes, right, like reflecting on our military past. Think about it in the sense of like in a, in a very concise short amount of time that's built for you already is with boot camp, basic training, whatever, wherever you went, right? You go in as someone, you know, new haircut, you know, for us guys, our heads are shaved. For uh, the women, you, you, you're you usually given like a clean cut, right? You go in has nothing, right? But they have a plan for you and it's made over the course of, you know, the duration of six, eight weeks, however long it is. And each week they implement a new small change into you that puts you out of your comfort zone. And when you get done, you look at the accumulation of those, those couple months and you see the big change, right? So think about it like that, where it's it's already, it's it's not po planned poorly, right? And they have you set up for success, the road's built for you, and they have those small changes implemented every week. And at the very, at the very end, it's the huge big change that happens. Do the same thing with what you're trying to do with your cyber career, where you are trying to create small changes and you have that create the bigger picture, right? You keep your head down and then you execute, right? And that's it, that's it. So pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, essentially. It really is. We let uh, our egos get in the way. That's what it is. That's that, the problem. that is a big thing. Don't tie your ego to anything. Leave it at the door. Yep. Let's uh let's go to the next slide. Yeah. All right. So again, continuing on. All right. Tracking your habits, okay? Track those habits, those small changes we're making. All right. Document it, you know, and you're gonna see that progress, all right. Uh and then that's going to require what we call knowledge of self. Okay. You know, uh, getting those habits. Okay. Knowing, okay. Hey, you know, I have a bad habit of waking up at five in the morning. You know, maybe I should set two alarms or, you know, things like that as an example. Okay. You got to know yourself. Okay. In order to, you know, track and change you know, those habits of yours. All right. Again, examples, waking up at 5.00 AM, no excessive, you know, unhealthy foods. And I say excessive. I mean, we all, we're all human. We got to have a little, right? We got to have a little fun. I'm 40. I want to eat some Ben and Jerry's. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Retired from one career here. Made it through. So. I've seen Jeff again. eat an entire thing of Ben and Jerry's in one sitting. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I am no shame. I'll do it again. Like, no doubt. So. <laughs> I'd also like to, uh, to, no, to Jeff, while you're, while you're, what, before you keep going though, is too, is something too important to think about this that that's fed in from the other slides that we talked about is you don't need to go and like find some, pay for some fancy, smancy, like habit tracking app. This is something that you literally can set up in an Excel sheet, right? You can, it's that simple and where, and you, you block it out throughout the entire month and then have a, another sheet that, that has the, you know, it has your results month by month. So that you can see those trends, right? And it's the small changes that turn into a big change, right? And and while these are examples, know too that when you have positivity in one part of your life, it often is infectious and goes into other parts of your life and is motivating, right? So while like notice how nothing here is really cyber, right? It's not cyberish, but if you if you're waking up, if you're a if you if you're a night owl and you're like I gotta wake up early if I want to do stuff, and you start waking up at 5 a.m. and you don't you know eat a bunch of junk. If you start meditating, meditating is is something that I highly recommend. It's something that I've picked up on in the past couple of years that has helped me out greatly. And my productivity has doubled, if not tripled, since doing it. And another big thing is hobbies, right? Hobbies are huge. Make sure that you find something to do outside of whatever it is that you do, right? Make sure that you do that. Mine, mine is actually, I do yoga. I do yoga about three to four times a week, and I track that. I don't know about what you do, Jeff, but 
mine is yeah. I track how, how often I do yoga and I use that as a positive insight that I'm, I'm staying grounded and not just on the cyber grind every day. I'll do like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, which helps, you know, a lot with the breathing, all that, the stretching, you know, almost like, you know, uh, yoga and stuff. So very helpful. Cool. Right, um, next slide. Cyrus says that with uh, studying too, he talks about, or they talk about with uh, being in the morning and stuff, right? You might not be a morning bird either, right? Yep. But say it's something that like, you know, say you're a night owl. Okay, cool. I st put it on your, on your habit tracking. Say you stayed up till two right or, or that you track the hours that you're studying right and see how that accumulates it's a big it's a big thing to do sorry it didn't want so oh no yeah uh something i was gonna say um cyrus you know mentioned on that um you're right uh and if you feel like you have like a sense of uh like accomplishment too when you study early in the morning because yeah i am too i'm up 4 35 o'clock in the morning you know i'm reading up on whatever i can working out doing something and yeah it's a sense of accomplishment i feel and you earn that Ben and Jerry's at the end of the night. All right. Also find people too that are, uh, you know, if you want to be an early bird or a night owl, find people that are up at those during, during mm -hmm. those times too, that you can have to break up the monotony of that time too. Like Jeff and I we're early birds and we're, mm -hmm. we're what an hour time difference aside, yeah. right? Cause you're up earlier, but um, I'm usually up within 30 minutes at the same time as him. And there's often more like we're pinging each other, you know, after being out of bed for 20, 30 minutes. So find somebody too, that you can connect with to, to talk to, uh, during that time, because it's a big deal, right? To, to make sure that you have people that are there to be part of your story and be part of your journey. Wu Tang didn't do it alone, right? So don't do it alone. All right. So John, this is yours. Yeah, your quote. Oh well, it's not my quote. It's from Eric, but it's, well, uh, it's yeah. The it's... Of today we have to focus on tomorrow, and that plays into the big picture, small picture thing, right? A big picture plays is is essentially the accumulation, the conclusion of a bunch of small things. That have that have worked out in your favor because you have stood your ground you have stayed focused and you've kept your head to the ground right so i'm not gonna keep beating that point down because it's literally the uh, mantra of this entire conversation so let's keep going <laughs> all right john this is you though man you want me to take this one yeah this is you right. this is so uh hey you get off my cloud right is a is one of the opening lyrics uh to the song method man all right and he, when he says that he said he's saying it in the sense of, hey, this is my style. This is my life. These are my methods, my means, my everything. Go find your own. Right. And watch me do what I have to do, because this is what I've built for myself to make me succeed. Right. So understand that you set the pace for yourself. What does that mean? That means that you can't copy what me and Jeff are doing. You have to be humble with yourself and understand your limitations and work outside those limitations, not excessively, but in moderation. Right. So hold yourself accountable and hold yourself humble. If anything, the big thing, I think the trend here, Jeff, is that you have to be accountable. Right. Yep. And if if you go back like back to what Jeff was saying, watch the American saga. And that's what happens is that RZA has everyone hold themselves accountable by signing a contract. Why not sign a contract with yourself? Why not sign a contract with a mentor saying, if I don't do this, that you're going to do something right. Or like, I'm going to owe you a hundred bucks. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. So make sure that you are doing things that is going to be on your own pace, right? But also always make sure that you are doing something that's going to keep you out a little bit out of your um, comfort zone, right? As it says, right, if someone else is on the same path as you but gets ahead of you, who cares, right? It yep. doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If, if someone else gets to some place before you do, it doesn't mean they're better than you. It doesn't mean that it doesn't mean anything. It really doesn't mean anything. So if you think about it, thinking that it thinks anything is a waste of your brain space. It's a waste of brain calories. Spend that energy on something else. Please do yourself the favor. Right. So go at your own pace. Nobody's living your life except you. Right. So if you're trying to live somebody else's life and you beat yourself up over it, you're essentially being toxic to yourself. So stop. Right. Yeah. Moving forward is still moving forward. Even when you fail, if you fail forward, guess what? You, you know, Jeff, Jeff, we're like, what? Well, I'm six foot, right? You're somewhere around there, right? Five, so like 10 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, right. So we're not, we're not the Smurf crew. We're also not the giants. We're the, we're the average Joe, right? Which is also from a method man, from the song method man. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you fall forward, guess what? That's six feet. Cause then you pick yourself back up and you've moved at least six feet. Okay. And you can look back and you can gain wisdom off of what you just did. So move forward. Just worry about making a small step. 
right? If any of you are runners, which we all had to run in the military, you know that it's not about how fast you always, how fast you do it. It's about completing it, right? And just following it through, right? So it's about taking those steps, even if they're small, even if they, you don't see the impact that day, you don't see it in a month, you're going to see it because eventually those steps are also going to start stepping into themselves. Um, and for the point at the bottom there, right? It's about making those small changes for yourself to help make the big change that you want to be. Okay. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you have anything you want to add. No, I mean, no, you did that beautifully. Um, yeah, especially at your own, go, go at your own pace. Like, oh, and I, I've had to learn that too. Like, cause I was in a rush to get things done and like, you know, and I had to sit there and, you know, talk to John too one day about it. Like, yeah, I'm going at my own pace on things like, and I have, and it's just things have like fallen into place now that I've decided this. And, you know, Jeff and I actually became good buddies because I'm going to kind of throw you under the bus here. Yeah, go for uh, it. We became, we became good buddies because Jeff didn't go at his own pace. He tried to go at every, he tried to go at everyone's pace at the same time and he got burnt out and I had to check up on him because I, I couldn't find him because he was in a, he was a student of mine uh, in a group with uh, a lot, a lot of folks. And Tom was actually in that group. It was an yep. OCP study group. And um, uh, Jeff was one of the folks that was very active in the group. And then all of a sudden he disappeared, but right? he didn't go at his own pace. He went wow. at, he tried to go at multiple people's paces at one time and he burnt himself out. Yeah. Rev that right like yeah, that was, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah Tom. Yes. <laughs> let's kick it to the next one. All right. Because we are I don't know how long we got, Tom. Uh, I know someone's after us. We're are we here until twelve? Or well, sorry, I'm in Texas. So are we here to the top of the hour? Ten minutes. Yeah, we gotta we gotta yeah, spit, we'll go spit fire on the mic pretty fast now. <laughs> All right. So shadow boxing, nightmares like Wes Craven. All right. So remember, you can be your biggest enemy. All right. Beating yourself up. Like I mentioned, you know, I was beating myself up because I felt like I wasn't on the same pace as others. All right. Become your own ally. Stop for a second. Realize, okay, no, there's no need for this. All right. Change your surroundings. Okay. If you change your environment and surroundings, okay. You, you got to like also like change your outlook. Okay. It can change your outlook on things as well. Surrounding yourself around positive people. Okay. That, that's the best way I like to put it. Like, or how to do it. Find those people there where you want to be, like I mentioned previously, and surround yourself by them. And you're going to find yourself before you know it in that new environment and surroundings, like rising on the same level as them. You know? And then again, like as we mentioned previously, track that progress, all right? And uh, use that as self reflection just to see how far uh, you've come. Because time's going to go by and you are, you're going to make progress and everything if you stick to it, like we've said. And again, own it. Yep. Fire up those Excel sheets. Um, also with the changing your surroundings, I like to always say too, like I challenge the, uh, the cliche of you, uh, you, you know, people say, you know, people don't have to be a product of their environment. That's absolutely true. And people argue that people aren't the product of their environment. You 100% are a product of your environment, but you have the capacity to change your environment and get out of that environment. Right? So if you don't want to be in a certain situation, get yourself out of that situation because you, don't always have control of the situation, right? So you have to figure it, figure yourself out, or figure your way around it. So, all right, all right. I'll you. Cool. Now we're gonna get into this here, okay? A little more serious of a subject here, okay? Um, PTSD. All right. Yeah, let's. Uh, it's one of those things. Yeah, a lot of us, you know, and I'll admit it. I had to finally admit it. You know what I mean? I got it. You know. Um, you know, it, it, it will help. It certainly helps you create those bad habits. Okay. And self-destruction. Okay. It leads you down a path here. Okay. Um, the best way I like to put it with like with me, you know, I go through like cycles. That's the best way I like to describe it. And it's like, you feel bad, you know, for like doing X, Y, Z for whatever reason. Okay. Um, and it may be nothing. Okay. A lot of times it isn't nothing, you know, but in our minds, no, like it, it means a lot to us. And again, the cycle starts up where we then feel bad, we do bad things. Then we, again, we feel bad for like doing those bad things, you know, and just, it repeats itself. Okay. So just like, be aware of that, uh, you know, make those cues for, and make the, make the cues and positive triggers. Okay. For you, those bad like habits, figure out, you know, 
what is it exactly, you know, uh, that's like setting it off here? Okay, you got to do that within yourself and like really, because it's going to be asked if not by you or if you choose to get therapy or whatever, you might as well figure the sooner the better. Try to figure it out if you can, you know, start self-reflecting, you know, take those moments in time. And then uh, again, going back to what we've been saying, uh, that progress we've talked about, it's not linear with other folks, okay? It'll burn you out, It'll burn me out quick, okay? So just use me as an example, <laughs> like take the steps needed, okay? And do what you gotta do, you know, like take a break, okay? And it worked for me, I took a break and it was good to go again, you know, <laughs> right afterwards and been good to go since, so, you know. John, you got anything on that or? Sorry, I couldn't get the unmute button. Um, yeah, the big thing is that, you know, find the, look at look at your life as like a, a business process and look at those inflection points where you're you're going down right because of PTSD issues um, use that and be humble and say okay like I know why this is happening think of the root cause and flip the script right because otherwise you're gonna let your mind torment you right and obviously it's easier said than said than done but find a way to do it because otherwise you know track that progress I'm like how many times, how many times did I have a PTSD moment and I was able to actually come out with a positive look, right? Track that. That's a good thing to track if it's something that you struggle with. So, next slide. All right. So rising from the, the, the Shaolin slum. All right. Use your military background, all right, to rise above. Okay. We develop more skills in the military than we actually think. Um, I've learned this firsthand, you know, recently, uh, just with my job and stuff, uh, just little things like we do in the military that can be applied over and make things better, you know, within our departments or wherever we go to work. Um, case in point, you know, my work the other day, I was like, hey, we need some organization here with all our stuff, you know, reports, all that, folders, file plans. And they're like, what's a file plan? And I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> Here, this is how you, you know, da, 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 you know, explaining it all. And they're like, whoa. And they're like, where did I learn that? The military. So, you know, there it's little things like that, even. Okay. That's just an example. You know more than you think. Okay. And, and you're worth more than you think. Okay. That too. Okay. It's a double edged sword, you know, especially when we're talking about money time here. Okay. You're worth more than you think. All right. And that gets into the next point. Your experiences, knowledge, and lessons from the military are valuable like big time valuable, okay? <laughs> like big time valuable. You don't sell them for free. It's not free, you know, as much as nice as you like to be, you know, hey, help out, you know? No, don't sell, you know, sell them, okay? Okay, it's not for free. John, you got anything on that? No, that you you crushed that, that one, man. Yeah, don't be yeah. nice, right? Don't be we nice. We all were in the military, so we yeah. know that we have to be hard asses sometimes, so apply it to that. Don't sell your stuff for free, man. Because you got to think about it this way like now's our time you know what I and mean? we did our time like whether it be the five years the 10 15 20 30 you know whatever it is like it's our time now like that's the way i look at it. i want to get paid now so that's my view on it all all right next up Ooh, killer bees on the tech all right so use your veteran support groups like this okay that sack is awesome okay and I, i'm gonna be honest like there's a lot of Military orgs I just don't like, you know, out there. And yeah, that's right, Kevin. We're on the swarm. <laughs> but like, yeah, Betsec is like it's just awesome. All right. Use this organization. Like, I don't know how many times I've reached out, like, like training, for instance. I'm like, hey, I gotta get better on Bert. Hey, you guys know any resources on like Bert? Within one second, this one guy out of nowhere on Slack. Hey, I got you, fam. You know, bam, you know, like, like little things like that, even. And like reach out for anything it would be like you know if you're having issues just navigating things like reach out like use this community it's like just so awesome um simply cyber is the woo representation wait john did you put that on there okay yeah but that's jerry oh, Rose's channel he represents the woo he and i talk a lot of wu-tang slang on the okay. side so that's cool well I, I need to meet simply cyber all right like-minded folks i like that uh 40 vet yes another awesome like program here okay I, I i tried out but luckily i found a job in time so i didn't need to use all of their services but please uh one of the speakers today uh who is it jay garcia he's 
as he spoke or is he speaking? He should have spoke already. Yeah, yeah. He runs the show over there. Great, great program. A lot of great training and all that. So I highly recommend it. And then uh, some of your companies, like, or some of these companies out there have veteran programs. Home Depot, um, Lowe's, all them, like, and they have cyber jobs open all the time, especially nowadays with everything going on. With them. So, like, check them out. Oh, for, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that, Tom. So again, uh, I said this earlier, surround yourself with the role models out there, you know, find those that are working the job where you want to be surround yourself by them. Okay, get that positive environment going. All right. So fine, we're coming around the, the stretch here. All right, right on time. Least, right on. Time. I said right on time too. Oh, okay. I'll talk about the first book here. Uh, Tao of Wu by the RZA. Um, John, you you got me onto it. Uh, I read it here recently. I read it again here for a second time here recently. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this book, is, uh, I got my book copy. Excuse me. <laughs> right. Ooh. right here. Okay. Again, I, I refer to it all the time. And again, it's just like, I don't know where to begin with it. It's just philosophically, I mean, spiritually, you know, and then just like all the stories he tells, you know, just about coming up, you know, from Staten Island in the hood there. It's just yeah it, it, it's yeah just really remarkable book so i highly you know recommend checking it out john atomic habits i haven't read atomic it Habits by james clear it's a fantastic book i've read it twice uh it's often a book that i have on it's a book an audiobook i have that i often have on replay um it is a book that's going to teach you everything that we just talked about and teach you how to actually excel with it uh, and better and teach how to and teach you how to be better than you were today that's really all I got. It's an amazing book. Just go buy it. Or at least get the audio book. Yeah, get both of them. Uh, they even right. have actually, like, I don't know if I have it on me. I think I left it in my hotel. They actually have a cliff note version of the book where you can just get the synopsis of each chapter. So you can also get that one if you don't want to read for a, a day or something. So cool. Anyways, go ahead, Jeff. No, this is it. We got here. We got to the end. No, I just want to thank everybody here for coming out today, checking this talk out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, my parting words is just what's on the slide here. Just remember, like, Wu is the way, Tang is the slang, and Clan is family, all right? So, again, thanks for coming out today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Quite, yeah. Don't forget, Wu Tang is for the children. Yep. Certs are temporary. Wu Tang is forever. <laughs> So who's coming on? Jake or Tom? Jake yeah. or Tom? Yeah, thank you, everybody. I'm thank glad you, that you guys man. were able to, to make it out I'm here. Sorry you. again for uh, if my thing has been wobbling. I'm literally sitting on a bench <laughs> in a Marriott. Uh, I was doing a little wobbling. <laughs> okay. Anyone got questions or I don't know. Yeah, if you have questions, I think we got a couple minutes. Yeah. I do have to split here in about a couple minutes because I have to go do another talk on a physical stage here in a second. So yeah, so I'm already get back <laughs> to work. <laughs> I was double booking it today. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm glad everyone got the the analogy and the slides. Good. Definitely, uh, maybe, you know, if you follow, well, Jeff isn't on social media, but you can find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. And I'm not so active on LinkedIn anymore and kind of active on Twitter, but might drop the slide deck to view later on. It's a pretty cool. good slide deck. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Uh, 40 Vet is like the program name. And then 40 Net's the company there itself. It's through them. Yeah. Hit up Tom. He, he if you look up, up top, he can help you out. How do you handle being interested in too many cyber things at once? Only focus on one because realize if you try to focus on multiple, you're not going to learn anything. We as humans do not multitask. Yeah. And if you tell yourself you can multitask, you're lying. Yeah, I focus mainly on web app and as a hobby, a hobby, you know what I mean? OSINT and all that, you know, but that's yeah. a hobby. You can John batch tasks, but, but multitasking is not the same as batching yeah. tasks. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, batching means you're doing similar things at one time. Mul yeah. Multitasking means you're like on your phone, you're listening to a meeting. Woo! Yeah, good luck. You're also you're giving too much power, uh, brain power to too many things. Tell my wife that. <laughs> Josh. And that ain't gonna work. Well, all right. Um, Tom, you in here, man? Or Jake? Did somebody take the stage? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, are we being taken over? Because I'll, I'll get off. Paging Danger Tom. This is ground control. <laughs> ground control to me. <laughs> all right. And that's all right, Kevin. If you want to go learn about something, that's fine. I'm just saying, don't like, don't try to dive deep into so many things at one time, right? Yeah. Get something your most effort, and then like gradually brush over something else. All right. Well, I don't know what's going on, but y'all were dope. Uh, thanks to everyone yeah. who's in the room sticking around. I do have to bounce. Uh, Same here. So you know, just if you, no, just know that no matter where you're in your career. Uh, you can always, you, there's always a path to go to the next point. So rather you're solidified in your career and you're looking just for that next edge, you can find it. Or if you're starting out, you know, being a veteran, you're in a good place, right? So you're already in a good place being a veteran. You'll find what you need, um, to get to the next point that you, uh, want to get to. You just have to make the effort. That's really it. You have mm -hmm. to make the effort and you have to leave your ego at the door. I agree. The stuff's out there. Like it's all out there. You just got to be able to find it. Like whether it be certs or whatever, like it's out there. And sometimes for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just got to know where to look yeah. or just keep looking. Don't give up. So. Okay. I think that's it. So, all right, folks. Well, I got to bounce. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks Take again. Take care, for, everybody. Uh, remember, remember, you know, go Wu Tang. Wu Tang. Wu -Tang. <laughs> all right. Later, guys. Bye, guys. Take care, everyone.